The AC Wildcats made the Huskies heel and set their sights on a second straight victory. I'm Sharni Moroski. And I'm Grant Boone. The Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks swing into Abilene today with an axe to grind after the Cats cut them down last season. Let's talk some ACU football right now on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome to week four of the Ken Collum Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. I'm Grant Boone, joined by Sharon Nemorowski, ACU senior journalism major, and Ken Collins, the head football coach of the ACU football Wildcats. Last Saturday at Shotwell Stadium, ACU won its conference opener 49-21 to over Houston Baptist. Coach, big crowd, big margin of victory. I know you're focused on what's happening on the field, but give us a sense of, of, of what you felt in terms of the atmosphere around Shotwell Stadium on opening night at home. Well, the atmosphere was great. Even when we drove up to the stadium, you got tailgaters, you got kids running around all over the place, and and the atmosphere was there. It was good. And it, it wall to wall purple. Yeah. We turned around. I don't pay that much attention to the crowd, but every now and then you want to look around. Hey, this is this is cool. And so there's a lot of people there. And 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 by and large, we played we played well and and uh, showed them a good game. Coach, today you'll see an old friend on the other sideline, Clint Conk, head coach of Stephen F. Austin. How strange is it to play someone who used to work for well it's less strange this year last yeah. year it was a little weird and it was it you know it was it was but but it's going to be like that every single year and uh he is a he's a good friend of mine and uh, i've got a lot of respect for the guy i learned a lot from him and uh and and he, he's a good man so it is uh you know i wish him luck i hope he wins every <laughs> game other than when he plays the wildcats well we'll talk a little bit more about that game, ACU and Stephen F. Austin, a little bit later on in the show. But when we come back, a look back at that big conference opening win against Houston Baptist last Saturday. Stay with us. The Ken Collins Show here presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. A week ago at Shotwell Stadium, ACU opened the Southland Conference season in style with a 49-21 victory over Houston Baptist. Here with the highlights is Daniel Zapata. The Wildcats welcome the Houston Baptist Huskies in their 2015 home opener. With the new look Wildcat country tailgate, ACU fans were ready for football to return to Abilene. In the first quarter, junior quarterback Parker McKenzie finds senior Jonathan Epps for a six yard touchdown to give ACU an early seven nothing lead. The play action fooled me, and it fooled Houston Baptist. Houston Baptist would cap off a 10-play, 66-yard drive with a 12-yard touchdown run to tie things up with a minute 23 left in the first. The Wildcats' slow start would continue as the Huskies put together another long, time-consuming drive ending in a touchdown, going up 14-7 in the second. The offense responded with a seven-play, 68-yard drive, ending in a nine-yard touchdown run from senior Herschel Sims, making it 14-all midway through the second quarter. Freshman Jabari Butler got the jump on HBU quarterback Max Starver for his first interception of the game and his first as a Wildcat. He would record another interception later in the game to give him two for the night. The turnover would result in a touchdown for the Wildcats as sophomore DeAndre Brown takes it to the house on a one-yard run with two minutes left in the half. ACU would head into the locker room up 21-14. ACU came out of halftime with an immediate scoring drive going 65 yards in four minutes to score on the pass to senior Cedric Gilbert. The Wildcats would strike again, this time with a three-yard pass from freshman Cody Ennis to senior Jamie Walker to make it 35-14 ACU with 5.42 left in the third quarter. The defense would come alive in the second half, limiting the Huskies to several three and outs and only one score.
The Wildcats would put the finishing touches on the home win with an eight-yard pass from McKenzie to Epps for the touchdown, making it 49-21 to late in the game. Sophomore linebacker Sam Denmark had this to say about the outcome. That feels great, you know, you come out uh, playing hot. We had a little rough start, you know, but we came out second half, started great. Um, it feels great to be 1-0 in the conference, but our overall record is 1-1, as you can tell. It um, feels great to get that first win of the season, especially at home in front of a great crowd tonight. It just feels great to get on roll, and we look to take that in the next week against SFA. Daniel, thanks. 49-21, ACU defeats Houston Baptist. Coach, let's start with a wide lens here. 1-0 in the Southland Conference. In your 20 years as a head coach, no matter who you play, no matter when or where you play, how much have you come to value simply winning a ball game, winning a conference game? You want to play well. The number one thing is every Saturday you want to go out and play well. But ultimately, it doesn't matter how you play. You want to win the game. Mm -hmm. And, and it, because, a, a, as people say, a sloppy win is way better than the alternative. Yeah. And uh, so, but it is good to be 1-0 in the conference and uh, man, we got eight in a row and Ooh. we're gonna have to get after it. In including today against Stephen F. Austin. Coach, you hadn't played in 16 days, but you come out, you get a three and out defensively and in five plays after you get the ball, you score. But then Houston Baptist begins to assert itself. You told us about their running backs and how much respect you have for them. All of a sudden it's 14 to seven. What happened in, in that stretch of about 10 to 12 minutes when they began to assert a little bit of control. Well, their game plan was to come in and run the ball to try to protect their quarterback a little bit. Uh, in that first drive, they were they were trying to throw it a little bit, and we just we happened to stop them and get the ball back. But after that, you know what they ran? They ran the ball successfully, and uh, they would get it down to uh, like 32, make the first down over, and they kept the ball for a while. And uh, had some 10 play drives. I know it sucked and, a little bit of the life out of the crowd and yep, the and, that, and that's and, and that's what you want. You're on the road. Yeah. You're you're against a an opponent who has scored a bunch of points on you in the past, and you want to keep the ball and run it a little bit. And it took us a while to get going. And and you never know if that is, and I'm the head coach, and I still don't know this. There's a whole lot that can happen when you're dealing with, with, dealing with a football team, whether the 16 days off uh, in between games had an effect on it or not. But the bottom line is we got it right and started playing well. The game, I thought, turned on two pass plays in the second quarter. One was a third and six or seven where – Park McKenzie threw a ball up, gave Jonathan Epps a chance to make a play. He did. 38 yards. You guys went in and scored. The next possession for them, a third down play where their quarterback, Max Staber, threw it up. And Jabari Butler out wrestled the Houston Baptist receiver for the ball. From that point on, it was all ACU. Sure. And, and it, was, it was a deal where the more they threw the ball, we were going to make plays. Mm. And, and we were very confident in that. We knew we were going to get after him. We, we pressured him. We sacked him a little bit. But a lot of times it doesn't take it doesn't take a sack. It takes hey bumping him, brushing him, just pressuring him, and uh, our D line did a good job of that. Third quarter. There's no such thing as a perfect quarter, I guess, uh, for any football team. But this is about as close as you can get. Third quarter, 188 yards of offense. You allow just four yards total offense from Houston Baptist. You outscore them 21 nothing, and you had a little jump pass from Cody Ennis yes. in there just for good measure. Yeah, and if you if you take the third quarter, if somebody just showed up and watched the third quarter. That's what, as a, as a head coach, that's what you want to see. That is Wildcat football. And it's not going to look like that all the time, but yeah. that is the goal. And, and, and the thing is, is we're not a good team yet. If we can make it look like that, and not necessarily perfect, but play at that level for four quarters, you're going to end up being a really good team. 49-21 to 21 is the final ACU over Houston Baptist. We'll look ahead to the Stephen F. Austin game a little bit later on in the show. But as we go to break, Take a look at scores from around the Southland Conference last week and pay special attention to that Lamar Sam Houston State score, the preseason favorite. The Bearcats at home lost to the Cardinals of Lamar in an absolute barn burner. AC will see those two in back to back weeks, October 10th and 17th. Stay with us on the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. Nick, thanks for joining us. Of course. Uh, let's go back several years. You started as a soccer player, and then in high school, soccer, and now you're at ACU as a kicker. Talk about that progression. Uh, I've played soccer all my life since I was three. Um, I took up football in eighth grade, and uh, I had nothing. I had no idea what I was doing. I played receiver, safety, <laughs> kicker, punter, um, even a little bit of defensive line. 
But uh, going into high school, um, I had made the decision that I wanted to make varsity soccer team as a freshman. And that was kind of at the time unheard of for Grapevine. And um, I decided not to play football. And then uh, my head coach at Grapevine kept calling me and he was telling me, hey, we need you to come out and kick for the freshman team and all these things. And my mom was like, go ahead and try it. If you don't like it, don't go. And I was like, all right. And then from then, freshman year, hit a 47-yard field goal and uh, got accustomed yeah. to it. And from then on, I was uh, kicking at Grapevine and it led me to where I am now. Yeah, speaking of natural talent, at ACU, your first two years, you were great. I think uh, several Southern Conference honors this past season. Uh, so just talk about your success. Um, I don't know. I, I put credit to uh, my kicking coach back at home, Scott Blanton. He played for the Redskins for four years, and he taught me everything. Uh, I've been coaching. He's been coaching me since sophomore year. Uh, I made the decision that I wanted to play college football my junior year, and um, I mean, all the credit goes to him. Mm -hmm. Speaking of tough decisions, between last fall and this fall, we just played our first game in Fresno, and after the first game, you're now proclaiming a medical red shirt for this coming season. So yes. tell me about that. Um, well, I have three herniated discs. Uh, the symptoms started in November, and then um, I was diagnosed with two herniations in the L5-S1. In January, uh, end of January, I was given the first cortisone shots. Um, the therapy was uh, taken off working out and running and uh, kind of spring ball, or not spring ball, but uh, spring season. And um, then in March, I was given another cortisone shot and nothing seemed to be working. Uh, throughout the summer, I was here working out, um, trying to get my back stronger. And then at the end of July, I was given my third cortisone shot, which seemed to help. It helped my right side uh, tremendously. And from March 27th to about uh, the first couple of days of fall camp, I had not kicked a football. Um, just trying to remove me from what really caused it. And then uh, in, let's see, the first week of school, um, they gave me, uh, they, we did another MRI. And they found another herniation on the left side on the L4. And um, they gave me another cortisone shot on the left side, which uh, having four cortisone shots in, within seven months is pretty dramatic. And so uh, only time could tell and see what would happen for this season. Um, since November, it's all been pain management. Uh, coming into Fresno, it was all trial and error, see what's going to happen. I played Fresno. Um, pain was too much to bear with and so when I got back it was time to make some tough decisions on whether to continue the season or not. And so now with that decision you'll sit out this season and what are your plans for next year? Um, I'm going to try to get the surgery as soon as possible. Uh, it is a six months recovery. I'm going to say eight just to be sure. Um, that'll take me to about May and then I'm going to work my tail off in the summer and get ready for season next year. Awesome. Well, thank you, Nick, for joining us. And I think I can speak for all of us. Best of luck thank through you. this entire process. Here's Hannah Knoll and Jonathan Rates with more ACU Sports. Tennis picked up 53 wins out of 100 matches when they traveled to Midland, Colorado Springs, and New Mexico last weekend. In Midland, Nico Agritelli and Josh Sheehy reached the semifinals of the 25-team doubles bracket, knocking out SMU competitors in the quarterfinals. Lucille Potier finished the weekend 6-0, winning each of her singles matches in all three of her doubles with partner Whitney Williams in Colorado Springs. The Wildcats won 21 out of 30 singles matches at the New Mexico State Invitational. Andrew Hutchison went 3-0 to win his singles bracket. The team continues its season October 9th when the men's team heads to New Mexico for the Lobo Invitational and the women play in Dallas at the SMU Invitational. Soccer tied its first conference game of the season against Texas A&M Corpus Christi last Friday. Here's more on the game. Both teams took full advantage of the field this Friday when the game carried into extra time. The Wildcats had 27 shots while the Islanders attempted 15. There was a total of four ACU yellow cards for the game. Two belonged to starter Leslie Snyder. Snyder was given a red card in the 99th minute. The ACU bench and Maria Gomez received yellow cards in the second half. 
Goalkeeper Sidney Newton had eight saves on the match, while Wildcat senior Lindsey Jones scored the lone goal with an assist off of Natalie Throneberry in the 86th minute. The Wildcats ended the game in a one-to-one -one tie. The team's record is now one win, five losses, and two ties for the season, and they have zero wins, zero losses, and one tie in conference play. The Wildcats face Nickel State this Friday in Louisiana. Volleyball ended non-conference season play with three losses at the Denver Invitational. The Wildcats began their weekend tournament losing 3-1 to Montana, a game in which Lauren Walker recorded 14 kills. ACU then faced the University of Chicago, Illinois, following 3-1. Jenny Lurch was a standout in the match with a double-double of 12 kills and 12 digs. They finished their weekend with a tough 3-0 loss to Denver, who only had 10 errors compared to ACU's 30. The Wildcats started Southland Conference play Thursday against Central Arkansas. The team has its home opener on October 1st when it faces Northwestern State. Women's Cross Country won their second team championship of the season this past weekend. The Wildcats were led by individual champion Alexandria Hackett. Daniel Block finished fourth in the 6K for the men's team. Ryan Cleary and Sterling Paul finished seventh and 11th respectively. As a team, the Wildcats finished second among Division I competitors. Both teams will travel to Texas A&M this weekend. When we come back, we'll find out how the Wildcats plan to win for the second year in a row against Stephen F. Austin. Stay with us on the Ken Collins Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. Back here on the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. Take a look at the schedule around the Southland Conference today. A couple of Southland teams stepping into FBS territory. Incarnate Word at UTEP. And the Nichols Colonels at Colorado up in Boulder. Well, ACU versus Stephen F. Austin, a rematch of an absolute doozy last year in Nacogdoches. DeAndre Brown rushed for 256 yards and three touchdowns. He sealed the game with one final burst in the closing seconds to help the Wildcats end the season with a 37-35 victory. And probably that loss denied the Lumberjacks a chance at hosting an FCS playoff game. They did make the playoffs, but they had to go on the road. They lost that game. Coach, uh, this is a Lumberjacks team that comes in 0-3. It's the first time since Clint Conk has been a head coach that any of his teams have been 0-3. You were never 0-3 when you were coaching for him at, at Central Arkansas, that's for sure. You got to believe when they get here today, they're going to give you their best shot, don't oh, you? Oh, no doubt. And you look at 0-3, and, and you can take from that what you want but what I take from that is okay well anybody plays TCU anybody they're probably not going to win <laughs> on yeah, any level th that's exactly right and and two of their other losses came to to teams, teams that that we lost to last year yeah. Northern Arizona and McNeese so uh, if we had the same schedule we may we may be 0 and 3 too but uh, you know that doesn't matter he's going to have his guys prepared He's a great coach. They've got a great staff down there. Uh, it doesn't, and it, the thing to me is we're playing at 11 in the morning. And 0-3, they're going to be hungry. They're still mad because we went down there and, and beat them last year. We're playing at 11 in the morning. That probably ticks them off a little bit. Uh, so, you know what? It, it's, there are good matchups across the board for both teams. It should be an entertaining game, and it should be a well-played game. Coach Grant mentioned DeAndre Brown had an amazing game, but in the second half, Stephen F's defense actually held you guys to just 11 points. So what does your offense need to do going into this game? Well, we've got to keep adjusting to what they're going to to what they're going to show us. Uh, you know, last uh, the last time we played them, it was both offenses executed fairly well. And, and it was I mean, it was a tight game. Nobody nobody really got out yeah. on anybody and but then the defenses both started making plays and our our defense uh, held them in check for a while, and but that's how it is in college football. When you when you deal with guys in the Southland Conference, everybody's got good coaches, everybody's got good players. They're going to make adjustments, and you have to you have to counter that. Let's talk about your defense against their offense. This is a veteran offensive line they've got. Now we'll see about Zach Conk. He didn't start the game against uh, McNeese State a week ago because uh, of an injury sustained against TCU. I would imagine you'd be, you'd be preparing for Zach, Clint's son, but Hunter Taylor started the game, uh, and, and they were in that game. That 28-14 was the final, but their oh, offense, yeah. they were on the goal line, weren't they, with a chance to score? Yes, and, and it was uh, the first, first drive of the game. 
uh, you know, SFA, uh, uh, Zach Cock tries to dive in from the one yard line and fumbles and uh, a McNeese Cowboy picks it up and runs it all the way back for a touchdown. So that's a, that's a, that's a dicey turnaround and you can't ever count on that happening and you got to get yourself back together and play the game. And that's what they did. They played well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just hard to overcome uh, something like that when you're playing McNeese. But, uh, you know, whoever they put out there is going to be a capable quarterback, is going to be able to run, is going to be able to throw it. Uh, Zach's physical presence really helps him in the run game, though. And, uh, but they anticipate him being healthy. Well, he's one of only a couple of quarterbacks, one of three, I think, on either level of Division One, FBS or FCS, with 15 rushing and 15 throwing touchdowns since yes. 2014. Should be a lot of fun. It's ACU hosting Stephen F. Austin, and it's going to be another great crowd at Shotwell Stadium. Hope you can make it out and watch. And until next week, for Shara and for Coach, I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall.